Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall be so glad and rejoice in it. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The grass may wither, the flowers may fade, but the word of God will last forever. I pray all is well and everybody's health is consistent in a, in a great health way. Uh, Father, and, and we just pray that God's blessing will continue to be upon us as he protect us through these continued times. Amen. As we matriculate through this wonderful month of October, this autumn season. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to be here. Bless the Lord all our soul and all that's within us. Bless your holy name. Bless the Lord all our soul and let us not forget your benefits, the benefits that we have by serving and worshiping and following you. Father God, I pray right now that you use me as a vessel, your vessel of the days where the word can be taught and preached in such a, such a way that lives can be changed. We can be encouraged, challenged, comforted, uh, and even convicted, if so, if so be it. And Father God, I pray that the words, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, as I stand as a man of God with the word of God for these people of God this Sunday morning. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. amen. Praise be to God. Today's lesson and teaching will come from the book of Romans. Familiar passage to some, Romans chapter 2, dealing with God's righteous judgment. Romans chapter 2, he may not read into your hearing. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same thing. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Amen. Chapter 2, Romans, verses 1 through 4. Let the Lord bless his holy and spoken and written word. For a subject today, we're going to speak about the power of the Holy Spirit. God's judgment is according to truth. God's judgment is according to truth. The word judgment, chrono, means to separate, to pick out or to select. It means to approve, to pronounce an opinion concerning right and wrong, or to summon, uh, to try. That one's case may be examined and judgment passed upon it. Paul wanted his readers to know that neither saint nor sinner was excused from the judgment of God. At the same time Paul wrote this letter, there were many Jews who believed that they could be righteous by doing certain moral and religious works through their activities on the outside. They believed they could earn favor with God and therefore receive eternal life by keeping the law of Moses and traditions handed down from them by their forefathers. They believed that. They, there were even Jews who believed they were exempt from judgment from the judgment of God just because they were Jews, yeah, God's chosen people. These people believe that God will condemn Gentiles because of their idolatry and immorality and ungodliness and unrighteousness. They, they, they believe that. Uh, there were still many people in the world, there are still many people today uh, in the world, in this world today, who believe that God will, will judge some because of their sins but will not judge them because of their sins or what they do and they're and, and, and they're that they're not as bad as others. Amen. But Paul was suggesting to the Romans that all ungodliness, yeah, all ungodliness and unrighteousness angers God. And humans, as humans, as humans, we need to know that there is there's nothing we can do of ourselves to bring ourselves up to God's standard. 
And he goes on in this very next chapter, amen, chapter 3 in Romans, the very next chapter, he unveils, he unveils some things about sin. He says in Romans 3.10, that there's no one righteous, no, not even one. And then in verse 23 of chapter 3, amen, he said, all that sin and fall short of the glory of God. So he just getting you up to the point we saw about sin. You can't, you know, it's, uh, we, hey, we, sin is a serious thing. There's no one that is perfect, you know, no one. You know, let me give you a little illustration before we press on in the text. If we, if you were here today in the sanctuary, pretty high at this church, amen, uh, if we would have a jumping contest and we were aiming for the ceiling of this particular church in the sanctuary, no one would win. What are you saying, Pastor? You may jump higher than I can and others around you, but I can guarantee you that that you that 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 everyone in this room is going to fall short. If you will hit it, they will fall, fall short of touching that ceiling. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if the ceiling is your standard, the fact that you have jumped higher, amen, than me or your neighbor in the pew is irrelevant. You still would have failed to meet that goal. What you saying, preacher? I'm glad you asked. God has his own standard, amen. Amen. You're going to fall short of his standard no matter how, how you jump, what you do, the money you have, how nice you are. You're going to fall, fall short, amen, of, of God's standard. One preacher I learned a long time ago, I heard him a long time ago, amen, as a young man, he said, man at his best is still a bad representation from God. Y'all can say amen. amen. This word therefore carries us back to Romans chapter 1. You ought to read it sometime, Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32. Paul was concerned that the Jews passed judgment on the Gentiles because the Jews felt themselves to be spiritually superior to the Gentiles. But Paul would tell those who thought they were exempt, amen. He wanted to tell them. He wanted to tell them that you, you, that you thought the ones that thought they were exempt from God's judgment, that they were, they were, they were wrong. Yeah, they were wrong, wrong in their, their, their thinking. So, 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 so God does not excuse anyone from his judgment. Let me say that again. God does not excuse anyone from the front of the pew, from the back of the pew, from the front of the church, the side of the church, inside, outside, officers, amen, trustees, deacons, amen, ushers, amen, uh, uh, nursery workers, parking lot attendants, amen. God does not excuse anyone from his judgment. Paul was deeply concerned that people condemn, that people condemn the behavior of others without recognizing their own condemnation is tarnished by their own inconsistency. You can say amen to that. But love, we are prone. We are prone to compliment, amen, sin in the lives of certain people. Yeah, we're prone to com amen, compliment, amen, the uh, uh, sin in the lives of uh, certain people. While we condemn the same sin we see in somebody else. Hello, somebody. But listen, 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 listen. Paul did not want his readers to feel themselves better than others because they did not practice the same sins as others. Amen. Although we may not practice the same sin of others, we may have given, but we may have given it a, some, kind of, some kind of thought on the line. So Paul was warning his readers not to condemn others because of their faults. People who are self-righteous or, or people who, are, who do not understand just how high God's standard of righteousness really is. Amen. You've got folk like that. They, the, the people that are self-righteous and, and they do not understand just how high God's standard is. He's God. He's perfect. He's righteous. God is holy. That's why Peter penned it. God said, be ye holy because I am holy. Amen. Amen. James penned it this way. In James 4 and 12, for your Bible readers, there is one lawgiver, amen, who is able to save and destroy. Who are you to judge? That's what James said. Amen. Praise be to God. Many, many of us do not understand that, that God judges more than our actions. He judges more than our actions. He also judges the thoughts and the motives. Amen. Let me say that again. He judges more than our actions. Amen. He judges our thoughts. Amen. And our motives. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. There are some people 
who want their judgment to be based on outward opinions and appearances. Amen. So they appear to be what they are not. Amen. 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 I, we say all the time, I say all the time, amen, your reputation is what other folks think about you, but your character is who you really are, and your character will show up. Luke penned it in that way, and Luke put that 12, he, man, he, there should be nothing covered that not, we, will, will be, not be revealed, neither hid, not, that will not be made known. Whatever you do in your secret closet, amen, that secret closet will come to light. Who you are will come out, and it will appear from what was on the inside. People can be hip hypocritical all they want. We can show you a good face, amen, but wearing masks, as many folk do, amen, but that's not that real, that's not that real person. That real person is behind that mask. Let me drop this in. Nobody really cares what you are doing until you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Some people are always watching what you're doing. A lot of folks don't care. What you doing? Until they look at until you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, then they oh, oh yeah, you're supposed to be doing this. Amen. Paul wanted his readers to know that no one can escape the judgment of God, even those who pretend to be what they are not. Even those who walk in the dark, amen, what others uh, those who walk in the dark, what others do in the light will not escape. The judgment of God. In verses 2 and 3, the text, in text, verses 2 and 3, the accuracy. God is accurate. If I if we hear today, I tell ask you, ask you tell your neighbor, oh you, God is accurate. The accuracy of God's judgment is right here in verses 2 and 3. He's accurate. God don't make no mistakes. All that God does is right. Amen. All that God does is right. It is always done according to divine truth. Because God is true, it is impossible for him to say or do anything that is not true. Preach, Reverend Mother. Because God is true, it is impossible for him to say or do anything that is not true. But when it comes to man's judgment, judgment is always distorted in some way. Amen. Man, it's, it's always distorted because we have everybody perception, amen, is reality. You perceive this person to be this way, what you see, that's what that person is, amen. I learned a long time ago, Martin Luther King, I, uh, amen, some great theologian, amen, on down the way. I do, do believe with him and say, if when a person shows you who you are, the, they, who they are the first time, you better believe. Preach, Reverend Bible. Our judgment is distorted that we can not even accurately judge ourselves. I just said something. Our judgment is so distorted that we cannot actually judge ourselves. You don't know what you like doing the crisis. Some of us have done some things, they may say, well, you know, I didn't think I'd ever do that, amen. Praise be to God. When, when man judges man, he always judges according to his own distorted view of things. Men pass judgment based on what we see, what man hears, what man tastes, what man feels, and, and or smells. That that five senses: hear, taste, feel, smell, touch. Amen. But when God judges, He operates out of His divine attributes. Therefore, He sees and, and He knows everything, even our thoughts, our motives, and our attitudes. Man's judgment is. Is, is often situational. Amen. Say amen if you can. Man's judgment is often situational. It may or may not be based on divine truth. It's how you like it, how you feeling that day, how you looking at it, amen. Who, who are they related to, who they know, who they grew up with, that sort of thing. Man's judgment is often situational. Where the situation that person was in, amen. It may or may not be based on divine truth. However, however, brothers and sisters, the judgment of God is always based on divine truth. God's judgment is based on reality, not fantasy. Let me say that again. God's judgment is based on reality and not fantasy. Amen. God is a God of all faith. He's a God of all faith. Therefore, he bases his judgment on truth. Oh, yes, he does. Because God is truth, we can always be sure that we will have a fair 
and, 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 and we will have a fair and impartial trial. Do I have a witness? Because God is truth, we never have to concern ourselves with him mistreating us. You can say amen if you can. Because God is truth, he would never be unfair or, or, mis, or mistaken in his judgments. Amen. Because God is truth, he does not deal with favoritism. And I know, folks, we live in a world, folks, do we talk about that in Bible study, amen, turn of the cheek, amen, love your enemies, pray for those, amen, that despitefully use you, and if someone asks for your cloak, amen, you give me your tunic too, give me your shirt, and all that, amen, some folks do something to you, we want to just do things to them, but he always speaks about that when he's talking to the folks in Rome. Amen. The church of Amen in Romans, Amen, 12, 19, he says, it's not our job to fake pay folk back, Amen, when they when they sin or do something in iniquity or transgression against us, Amen. He said, Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay, Amen. That's Romans 12, Amen, 19, Amen. Leave it up to God to deal with those folk, Amen. Even today in these times, Amen. And Amen. You know what I'm talking about. Let God deal with these folk. Because he's gonna deal with you because you're gonna deal with them in in a distorted way, in a situational way. Let me hasten. There are some people who feel themselves morally superior to others. Some people, not all. Some folk, you be in church, I say down your road, down your street, around the corner, at the market. There are some people who feel themselves morally superior to others. These individuals do not honestly judge the condition uh, 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 of their own hearts. Let me say it again. These individuals do not honestly judge the condition of their hearts. Where are you going, Reverend? Jeremiah opinion like this in Jeremiah 17 and 9. He said, the heart is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Inherently sinful and it cannot be righteous. Watch this, watch this. God does not judge man for the sake of man's harm, but rather for man's good. Why does he do that? I'm glad you asked. God can be ignored, but he cannot be avoided. I'm going to give it to you again. God, he can be ignored. We do it all the time. Oh, I don't say all the time. I just bust your bubble. Amen. But he cannot be avoided. Regardless of one's power, position, or possessions, no one can escape the notice of God. No one, no one, brothers and sisters, can escape the notice of God. God judges all people. And what I mean that all means one thing. All means all. Red, yellow, black, and white, blue, green, amen. Asian, Gentile, amen. Jew, amen. Hispanic, amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Jamaican, amen. Philippine, a Filipino, Hawaiian, amen. Brazilian, amen. Canadian, amen. He judges all people. Russia, China, Denmark. It is, it is possible for a person to escape man's judgment. Man does it all the time. Sometimes men don't want to pay their taxes, amen, but he go, that, per, that same person, go, they, they owe a tax to God. Y'all can say amen. Because this thing is about what you're trying to get away with in this life. God sees it all. It is possible for a person to escape, escape man's judgment, but no one can escape God's judgment. Despite the fact that God sometimes seems slow in his judgment of man. Sometimes he don't come quick enough for us. But his judgment is certain. God withholds his anger from man so that he can lead man to repentance. I'm preaching it like I feel it now. But hey, 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 reason I get this from, where I get this from, 2 Peter tells us that. Chapter 3, verse 9, he says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise that some count slackness. This is in your Bible. But is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is after your soul. He wants you to do right. That's why he tells the chronicle tells us, amen, that my people who call my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked ways. Then we'll be able to hear from heaven. Amen. Our sin will be forgiven and our land can be healed. Amen. You got to repent. God wants to deal with everybody. He wants us righteous and holy. Amen. That's our answer. But he's not slack. He's trying to work on you and work on others before he comes back. Because he's coming back. 
for his church with spot or wrinkle, amen. When we think that, think of Jesus. He is God's love. Being blessed is God's love, y'all. When you think of Jesus, he is God's love. He is God's love because God sent Jesus. What Adam got us into, Jesus got us out of. We couldn't keep the Ten Commandments. God knew this. That's why we messed up. The Father of Man, Genesis chapter 3. So Jesus had to come. God's love being blessed is God's love being, being dignified. Accepting Jesus into our lives as Savior. That is God's love magnified. God's love does some things, you all. God's love transforms our burdens into blessings. God's love transforms our cares into comforts. God's love transforms our defeats into delights. God's love transforms our hearts, heartaches into hallelujah. God's love transforms our problems into praises. God's love transforms our sorrows into song. God's love transforms our griefs into glory. Thank God for the accuracy of his judgment. Praise be to God because Jesus did it all on that hill on Calvary. Amen. The whole world was judged that day. All of mankind, if you will, was judged that day. But be thanks be to Jesus, because he didn't stay on that bar till he rose up early one Sunday morning with all power. And then right now he's sitting at the right hand of the God of the righteous judge. Right now. And he's looking down on all of us. So you do what you do in the name of Jesus. Accept the Lord, follow his ways, follow his precepts, and follow his attributes. This is your servant's prayer. Have a great, wonderful, uh, awesome, safe, holy, and a magnificent week. In Jesus' name, from me to you, God bless you.